The way Ready Player 2 should have gone. Oh, Wade, I'm so happy. Samantha, you were right. The real world is better than the Oasis. Or at least it could be if we work together to fix it. Yeah, let's use our vast wealth and influence to inspire people, Wade. Let's use the Oasis as a tool to get people out of their houses and plant a tree or something. Nah, just kidding, Artie. I'm going to be a complete douchebag for 72% of the book, drive you and everybody I love away from me, and then win you back without actually having a redemption arc. That sounds cool, right? Ready Player 2 has got to be the biggest knife to the heart of any major franchise sequel in history. Seriously, did you enjoy the first book? Please, please do not read the steaming pile of hot garbage that is Ready Player 2. It will ruin everything. I'm not kidding. It will retroactively go back in time and ruin your appreciation of the first book. Hey, welcome back to Nerd Crave. Hey, if you're new here, just take one minute right now. Yep, just stop what you're doing right now. Go hit that subscribe button down there because I've got all kinds of new stuff coming up this year. 2021 is going to be an amazing year. The channel's growing in leaps and bounds, and I really want you to be a part of the community that I'm building. But anyway, let's get back to Ready Player Two. What a massive disappointment this book was. Absolutely just gut wrenching. To set the stage, you know, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you have read Ready Player One or watched the movie Ready Player One. Now, the movie was bad enough. I mean, it was good as a standalone movie. If you'd never read the book, the movie was pretty cool. But the book was just another level of amazing. And I'll link to my Ready Player One review and my comparison of the book versus the movie versus the audiobook that I did a few months ago. I'll link to that down below in the description, so be sure to check that out as well. But look, Ready Player One was not a book about video games. It was not a book about nerds and pop culture and the 80s. Sure, all that stuff played very heavily into the book, but I think the author himself, Ernest Klein, Either one of two things happened. Either he does not understood what he wrote, he doesn't really understand what he created, or he's just sold out to Hollywood, one or the other, because the second book, Ready Player Two, reads like a movie sequel. It, uh, you know, it's another adventure in the Oasis, with a whole new antagonist and a whole new challenge, a whole, it's a carbon copy of the first movie, there's really nothing in there to recommend it as far as what the readers were expecting. Uh, going back to Ready Player One, Ready Player One was first and foremost a dystopian science fiction novel. Yeah, that's right. Dystopian science fiction novel, like The Hunger Games, like Divergent, uh, where, you know, human society had degraded in the future. It's the year is 2045, and and there's an energy crisis, and there's governmental uh, issues, and crime, and, and uh, unemployment, and lack of food and resources, and the whole world is just crumbling and decaying, uh, massive unemployment, and people have found an escape in the VR world of the Oasis. They've found an escape from their real lives, and the book catalogs this underdog, this poor kid, Wade Watts, who grows up in the Oasis. It's all that he knows. His family is a wreck. His mother's a prostitute and a drug dealer. His father left. Uh, he's living with his, you know, angry aunt who makes him sleep Harry Potter style in the laundry room. He has a terrible life. He has to rifle through dumpsters just to get you know, computer parts and things that he can fix up just to get food for himself because his aunt won't even feed him. He's the classic underdog. He's the guy you want to root for. And all the way through the first book, we rooted for Wade as he competed in the challenges to hopefully win that half a trillion dollars and win control of the Oasis that he so loved. And we root for him in his relationships with his friends like H and Artemis. Artemis, his love life, the whole 
crux of the book moving forward is the you know the relationship between him and Artemis and how they play off each other and how she is kind of the the better half in the situation and teaches him a lot of things about the real world that he didn't know and by the end of the book the entire focus of the book yes there's all kinds of great 80s pop culture references and cool descriptions of virtual reality and all that kind of stuff but at the end of the first book you are led to believe that Wade and Samantha after they win the contest, win the money, that they are going to use those resources to fix the real world. Samantha specifically says that she wants to use the money to solve world hunger. Now Wade does say that he wants to build a spaceship and fly away from Earth, but that's kind of a juvenile dream and nobody really expects him to do that, but guess what? In the second book, all of that is out the window. Wade is a complete douchebag, I can't believe this because we rooted for this character, we loved this character, we wanted him to succeed, and what did he do? He turned into an asshole. He wins the money, he becomes a recluse, he spends all kinds of money on all kinds of stupid stuff, he invades people's privacy, he you know, goes after people because of his invincibility in the VR world with his you know, special super user powers. He, you know, goes after people that don't like him, that, uh, you know, say mean things about him or whatever, and he destroys their accounts and uh, deletes stuff. And uh, it, it's absolutely, you know, he spies on Samantha. He spies on his friends. Uh, he does all kinds of creepy stuff, like when he's trying to move forward in the new quest in the new book, which was completely unnecessary, by the way. Uh, you know, he starts spying on some other members to find out what they know. Uh, he eventually pays someone to do what he should have done because in the first book he was the most knowledgeable person on all this 80s stuff. He was so cool, he knew everything about everything, and if he didn't know it, he could put the pieces of the puzzle together really fast and, you know, faster than anybody else and solve all of these great, uh, you know, Easter egg hunts, all these different. I don't know, it was just. The first book was incredible. You wanted to love this guy, you wanted him to succeed, and in the first 75% of the book, Wade is now a complete asshole who pushes away all of his friends, everybody who loves him, uh, you know, he's lost Samantha, Samantha thinks he's a complete jerk, and then about three quarters of the way through the book, as he's going through this whole new pointless challenge, uh, you realize that Samantha is starting to like him again for no particular reason other than perhaps nostalgia, because he hasn't improved his behavior at all. Sure, he wants to make up with Samantha, he wants Samantha back, but not not enough to actually, you know, learn something from her and become a better person. Oh no, no, he just gets forgiven for no reason whatsoever. And at, then at the end, I'm not going to give a complete spoiler here, if you haven't read the book, you know, by all means, Read the book if you absolutely have to, but I'm telling you something. This is a movie script for a bad Hollywood sequel. This is not the book that we were promised. This is not the book that we deserved. We want to see Wade and Samantha and Shoto and H go out there and fix the real world to use the resources of the Oasis to create challenges of their own for the population to get those people back uh, engaged in the real world, to give those people jobs and income, hope for the future, to you know use their enormous financial wealth to direct the policy of governments and overthrow dictators and feed the poor, uh, you know, this book sucks. It just sucks, plain and simple. I wish I hadn't read it. Anyways, guys, thanks for sticking around for this horrible rant. I hope it made some sense to you. I hope if you do read the book that you can look at it through the lens of it's just another adventure in this VR world. It is not the conclusion that we were hoping for based on the ending of the first book. Anyways, guys... Stay classy.